Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's a beautiful, beautiful Thursday, March 14th, 2024. You know, they talk about this climate change. Boy, you see how tan I'm getting? I have to read all this stuff. I read six hours a day from information from around the, wor around the world. So I try to sit outside and get that sun. So there's an upside to climate change. Flowers are coming up. Birds are singing. Anyway, take it easy, all you climate guys. I mean, they're killing us a million goddamn ways with all the poisons they're putting in our food and our water in the air. Oh, I'm on the Hudson River over here. You still got those PCBs from General Electric. General Electric here? Yeah. We'll tell you what to do. General Electric will poison the shit out of you. But we're making a lot of money. So anyway, going back to the news. Markets today were down. Wholesale inflation went up higher than they thought. Huh. Gold prices went down. Oil. You got Brent crude now at about $85 a barrel. What happened? Uh, Ukraine attacked a major oil refinery in Russia. Read your trends journal. Week after 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 week. It's a weekly the grand total of $2 and 56 cents a week, basically nothing. And again, golden year for gold. One of your top trends, world war three, top trends, EV, go F you all on the mark. So going back to oil, we've been warning that Oil prices are going to escalate dramatically as, not if, as the Middle East and Ukraine war keeps expanding. And our warning or forecasting that with Ukraine losing the dough that they need, they're going to ramp up attacks inside Russia. There you got it. And you haven't seen anything yet as the Israel war keeps expanding, which we will get back to. And gold prices took a bit of a hit today, but they're still way up there and we see them staying up. So here's your deal. Inflation is going up as economies are going down. Japan, UK, Germany in recession. Again, inflation's going up. It is not stagflation. The economies are going down. We are going to go through a period of dragflation. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, LGB2. I'm not talking about that kind of drag, you know. Dragflation meaning economies go down and inflation goes up. So the beginning... Going back to gold, you got inflation going up. The value of your currencies are being decreased. That's why, by the way, you're seeing Bitcoin keep going up, particularly in poorer countries. People can't afford to buy gold. They're buying whatever they can in, in cryptocurrencies. And that's just pushing it up. So, moving forward, let's see. Ah. This is from Reuters, and this is from yesterday. This is what? Uh, almost four-year-old news for trends. Yeah, it, it, actually, May. We, we did this in May of 2000 and 2020. We had made the forecast of an office building bust. You ready? The troubled U.S. office market is the world's most oversupplied, and property investors have taken on too much debt. A Brookfield Asset Management executive said on Wednesday, Hey, my lord, hey, Brookfield said it. It must be true. Per capita, it's the most oversupplied office market in the world. That's really the story. Unfortunately, we, the U.S., build too much of it in certain places, and it doesn't need to be used for offices anymore. The sector as a whole borrowed too much money. Office and vacancy rates at around... 20% in the largest cities, okay? This is old, 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 old news. Office building bust. Then 
What's one of our top trends for 2024? Banks go bust. Banks go bust. Yep, it's going to happen. And the small and medium-sized banks are going to take the biggest hit. And the commercial real estate sector, in many different ways, is being targeted because they're not going to be able to pay the debt. Oh, and again, Ukraine drone hits big Russian oil refinery. Yeah, okay. Oil rallied after U.S. stocks piled decline for the first time in several weeks, and a Ukraine drone struck one of Russia's biggest refineries, Bloomberg. Yeah, no kidding. So there you got it. And when I say things are bad and the people are suffering and it's inflation, they're really feeling it. This is an article that came out you know, on CNBC, and they quote a report by savings.com. 47% of parents still financially support adult children, study finds. The parents are spending out $1,384 a month, the report found. 61% of adult children are still living at home, and they don't contribute to household expenses at all, according to savings.com. But don't worry about it. The rich are getting richer. Everybody's doing fine. When I was a kid, you know, we didn't get allowances. You're on your own. You know, you want to go to college, you go pay for it. You know, there were seven kids, man. You know, you're on your own. And thank God, because that's what they taught us. You're on your own. And I'm only me because we're blessed mwah, with the parents and aunts and uncles grandparents that I had, and I thank them every day. I had all the pictures of them up there. Every day with a cup of espresso. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's kind and loving. Inflation cooled, but shoppers are sweating. $7.99 deodorant. This is in today's Wall Street Journal. And by the way, I am hardly getting any articles out of the Wall Street Journal. They're firing people. And the Wall Street Journal used to be a great newspaper up until about five years ago when the firing started. And it's so hard now to find strong economic data that we can give our subscribers because we need the economic data that, so that we can make our forecasts. So now we have to spend much more time traveling the world looking for good data. But they have this article here about how uh, the pace of inflation, blah, 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 blah. But you ready? Prices are still rising, just at a slower rate. They remain markedly higher than they were before the pandemic. Not before the pandemic, before the COVID war. It was not a pandemic. It was declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. On March 11th, 2020, when the grand total of 4,219 people died out of 8 billion and only 99 point, what is it, about 9.4% of the people are still alive. But anyway, they use the word pandemic. Then the pandemic began and consumers' expectations for how much goods and services should cost haven't caught up. And all the data is here. They talked about, you know, baby wipes before the uh, COVID war. They were four dollars and twenty-five cents. Now they're six sixty-four. Bleach two dollars and seventy-eight cents. Four dollars and eighty-seven cents. Cooking oil five dollars and twenty-two cents. Eight dollars and four cents. Deodorant, yeah, four dollars and sixty-something cents. Seven dollars and forty-three cents. On and on. So, dragflation, kavish. That's what we're going to be facing. Alcoa agrees to buy $2.2 billion deal to acquire Australia's alumini, alum, alumina. Again, bigs keep getting bigger, big rich keep getting richer, and everybody else keeps getting poorer. You ready for this? This is from Tuesday's Wall Street Journal. Old battery woes plague new EVs. We've only been saying this since the whole EV thing began, that the batteries are a joke. They were invented in 1800. 
Look at the size of these things and look what you have to do to, re, to, to regenerate them. So again, if we put our money into research and development rather than the military industrial complex, yeah, we'd have, we'd have clean energy and, and you'd have cars that were running on, you know, poof, whoever air, but no, we got to spend more money for the war machine. So now this is from, so all you little low life pieces of scum, the ones that want to kill me and call me an anti-Semite when again, the people running Israel are not Semites, they're Ashkenazis, A-S-H-K, K-H-E, N-A-Z-I. Ashka Nazis from Eastern Europe, the Khazars. They're not Semites. The Palestinians are Semites. So even the term anti Semite doesn't work. So this is from the Times of Israel. You see the major headline stories about the, the blocking the Congress already passed the law. And it has the president said he'll sign it if it keeps going through to ban TikTok. Times of Israel. Major U.S. groups back bipartisan bill that could see TikTok banned. Nothing to do with the Chinese. Total, total. Bullshit. One of the most prominent Jewish groups in the country has thrown its support behind the fast advancing bill that could lead to the massively popular video app TikTok being banned in the United States. The United States, the country that we're going over there to bring freedom and democracy that are robbing us of our freedom. Oh, and by the way, watch the video I did with Judge Andrew Napolitano yesterday talking about this and now it's becoming a reality. Freedom is gone. They go on to say, politicians backing the bill, uh, leaders of both parties, blah, 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 blah. and they go on that Jewish federations of North America representing hundreds of organized Jewish communities said its support for the bill is rooted in concerns about anti-Semitism on the platforms. You are not allowed to condemn Israel for slaughtering innocent people. How dare you? They're just using that. They're doing it to get Hamas. Oh, but you're killing all these people. Well, Hamas is using them as human shields. So we're bombing universities. We're destroying mosques. We're totaling out hospitals because Hamas is hanging in there. Oh, and over 75% of people's homes, Hamas is doing it. Why, that's anti-Semite. If you say anything differently, this is America. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. The Jewish Federation and the Anti-Defamation League have accused TikTok of allowing anti-Semitic, anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment to run rampant. Oh, you're not allowed to talk about anti-Israel? You're not, you're not allowed to be anti-Israel? You all claim be anti-Russian, anti-Iran, anti-North Korea. Can't be anti-any anti, anti of America's uh, countries that the flunkies support. It keeps going on. Disgusting. Oh, this is from uh, Middle East Eye. U.S. pro-Israel group backs ban on anti-Semitic TikTok. One of the largest Jewish pro-Israel groups has thrown its weight behind a ban of a popular video. All right. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Former Treasury Secretary under Trump. This guy has a track record of disgust if you see what's written about him when he headed banks in California that forced people it's, again I'm not going to say what happened but it had to do with foreclosures and many people blame the bank for wiping people out of their homes needlessly yeah that guy Stephen Mnuchin yeah look at this guy 
He said he's putting together a consortium to try to buy TikTok. Hmm, Mnuchin, Jewish guy, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, you anti-Semite, you, you anti-Jew. Yeah, screw you. And again, I'm very upset that I get these emails from this guy called our office 10 times saying he's going to kill me. Oh, and I came out against the clown playing prime minister of Poland who said the pre, the, the, the era of peace is over and we have to prepare for war. How dare I say that as the founder of Occupied Peace? So what you need to do is you got to click the bell on this uh, icon over here. So because they're doing everything to ban me, they're doing everything to stop me, and, and I'm only speaking for peace on earth, goodwill to all. I guess we'll kill Salenti because he's a warrior for the Prince of Peace. Isn't that nice? You're not allowed to talk about peace. And again, subscribe to the Trends Journal. It's a grand total of $2.56 a week. We're giving you what nobody else in the world is giving you. The facts are there. Ah, more kids killed in Gaza than in four years of global conflict. Why, those anti-Semites, they had that on TikTok? No, no, the UN said that. Yep. More children have been killed by Israeli forces in Gaza since October than have died in every global conflict between 2019 and 2022 combined. Over 12,300 children. They were Hamas kids. That's why we killed them. I mean, let's make up anything. You like that, Mnuchin, huh? Hey, Mnuchin, you love that, don't you? You ready? U.S. finds spare cash to provide weaponry to Ukraine. The numbers are between 300 and 400 million dollars. Spare cash. EU, five billion dollars to fund arms for Kiev. Anyway, it keeps going on. Detainees from Gaza say Israelis stripped and beat them. This is this is a whole big article in the Wall Street Journal. The atrocities that are being committed. Hey, but America, that's okay. We got Guantanamo. This is nothing. Come on. What are you going after them for? And as I said, and when as we warned with one of our top trends for 2023, Middle East meltdown, when we warned that this would happen this year, Israel's clashes with Hezbollah intensify. This is from the Financial Times. Cross-border fire between Israel and Hezbollah has escalated sharply as Israeli jets twice struck tar targets deep inside Lebanon in the past 48 hours. This is yesterday being reported. You ready? And the militant group responded with a single largest barrage of rockets since the start of the hostilities in October. Militants responded. Okay. Israel bombs the shit out of Lebanon and the people of Lebanon respond to getting bombed and they're called militants. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. We're not media whores that get paid to put out by, our, by the corporate pimps and the government whore masters. How disgusting to write like this. How disgusting to write. How about they retaliated? Hey, in the Bronx, we used to say payback's a bitch. You bastards. Oh, Neri Ziba in Tel Aviv reported on this. Yeah, okay, there you go. China calls for immediate ceasefire as Gaza conflict defies Ramadan. This is from the Global Times. I want to read this. Quote, the killing of Gaza civilians must stop. The injustice toward the Palestinian people must be corrected. And the double standards in dealing with human rights and international humanitarian law must be abandoned. The longer the flames of Gaza flare up, the more the humanity is scourged by conscience the more the cornerstone of justice is eroded. And that was according to their foreign minister. Perfectly true. And Poland's foreign minister confirms NATO troops are in 
Ukraine. And as I said, Poland says that we have to prepare for the next war. And Poland, the biggest army in the EU, EU, and they go on to say that the Polish minister said this week that the, um, he said, quote, several NATO countries already have their troops in Ukraine. This is Guy Sikorsky. He said the West should pursue the policy of asymmetrical escalation in Ukraine. And then in the New York, the Wall Street Journal today, Putin rattles nuclear saber. He's saying, if it's going to go nuclear, we're going to go nuclear. Again, World War III has begun. People have no clue about how bad it is. China, Iran, Russia, this is the Global Times of China, launched joint drills near Gulf of Oman. Safeguard regional maritime security. China warns of conflict over U.S. push for major country contest. Keeps going on. And then over in New Zealand, hundreds of jobs to be axed in New Zealand's media restructure. I'm mentioning this because we've been talking about the death of journalism. You're firing everybody. Reuters is spending tons of money on AI. It's all becoming fake. So we're doing everything we can to support you. So please do everything you can to support us. Because the more subscribers we have, the more we can do. And again, we're giving you everything you, we can give you in the Trends Journal. And there's, there's no way. You look at the comments in YouTube from people that subscribe to it. You don't have to believe me. Believe them. They love it and they can't believe it. And you can listen to it, by the way. So thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, tune in Salenti and the Judge yesterday. It's a home run.